With the latest shakeup in real estate, there are two things that continue to come up in conversation. Number one, appraisals are coming in light. And number two, people potentially walking away from deals. In this video, I'm going to talk about the implications of walking away from a deal and if that's actually something that, that people can consider doing as an option and what it means to have an appraisal come in light and how we calculate its impact. Also, excuse me for sounding a little sick. I feel like this guy right here. We'll get through this video and I hope you're going to learn something new. Hi, my name is Vass and I'm a chartered professional accountant turned realtor that's built and invested in real estate right here in York region, Toronto and in secondary markets outside of the GTA. Let's start with a simple example of what having an appraisal come in light means. So imagine buying a townhouse or a property for a million dollars. Imagine you have 20% down payment and you need a mortgage of $800,000 or 80% of the value of the home in order to close on this house and purchase it. So you have 200K cash and 800K you're going to get as a mortgage. What can happen is if prices drop quickly, like they have recently, the lender can go and appraise the property and determine that maybe the property is no longer worth a million dollars. It's maybe worth 20% less than when you purchased it. So that means that $1 million property is now 800,000. So what does that mean? Well, based on a loan to value calculation of 80%, that means that the loan amount the bank is now willing to give you is not 800,000, but it's 640,000, if my memory serves me right. That means you now have a shortfall on how much money you need to put down as a deposit or sorry, as a down payment in order to close for the property. So originally you needed 200,000. Now you have a shortfall of 160,000 so that you have 360,000 because your mortgage is no longer 800, but it's 640. And this is what position a lot of people may find themselves in. This is an extreme position, but nonetheless, this happens and it is a risk for somebody not to close. Generally speaking, from my experience, people will find ways to come up with the extra cash through loans from family, private lenders, B lenders. Now, in the event you can't come up with the money, what, what are your options? Well, usually that means that you either have to ask for a mutual release from the seller so that you can both walk away from the transaction. But a seller is not going to mutually agree to this because why would they walk away from somebody that bought their house at a million dollars, can't close, and now they have to take $800,000. So effectively, they're going to lose 200000 So that brings us to the next point. But what happens then in this event? Well, what can happen is if you don't close, you're going to lose your deposit money in the short term, and then potentially you're going to be on the hook for the difference in price value lost between how much the house was when you paid for it and how much it sells for after you were not able to close for, close on it. So in other words, if you bought it for a million dollars and you put $50,000 deposit, so you're going to lose your 50,000 K. And then if that same house sells after for 800,000, the seller can then go ahead and sue you for the $200,000 difference and carrying costs and a bunch of other things in order to recoup their perceived loss based on your original agreement of purchase and sale. Now, I'm not a lawyer, so don't take any of this stuff as gospel. I'm just telling you what I've seen in the past. And there's a lot of misconception because if you Google a lot of this stuff, like being able to walk away from a house, the rules are totally different in the United States where a lot of the search results will come up from compared to Canada. You cannot walk away from a house in Canada the same way you could in the United States. Here's a case that was recently settled in New Market between Rose Heaven Homes and these people right here as of January 24th, 2022. So we're going to go over the highlights very quickly so that we get to the punchline. So the damages that are being seeked here are 429,000, 331,000 of that is in damages above and beyond the deposit that was paid of 90,000. 17, uh, these people bought this house for 1.5 million. These are the deposits they gave. And this was all done right around when we had this crash, quote unquote crash uh, in April of 2017. Going through this case, the defendants could not close on November 29th, 2018, and this is after they had multiple extensions. And the plaintiff resold the property in 2019 for just over $1 million. So textbook example of what happens when you buy in a really hot market at the top, and then prices drop very quickly. Here's the outline of damages. So purchase price of property, 1.52. Uh, less the sales price that they got in 2019, deposits paid, oh, my apologies, it was a 90,000, it was 136,000, carrying costs, and then you have your total difference of shortfall of 331,000. So this would be in our earlier example of a million, a million dollar house going to 800,000. The 331 on that example is the equivalent of 200,000 minus the $50,000 deposit, so it's 150,000. The defendants 
shall pay the plaintiff Rosehaven, Rosehaven Homes the sum of 331000 and this is pretty much your judgment, and this is how the judge felt this should be handled. And there are more examples of this. I will attach a link to this PDF below, but it gives you an idea what we're dealing with here if you cannot close on a house. The story doesn't end here because this is just the judgment. It's an entirely different uh, scenario to actually collect the money. Having been through small claims court with uh, contractors and um, for smaller amounts, I can tell you that once you have a settlement, that is just the beginning because if people have been through this process before, there's games they can play. So again, just because they were awarded uh, this 331 judgment, $331,000 judgment, it doesn't mean that the home builder is in the clear. They have to collect. There could be payment plans. You can try garnishments. People can declare bankruptcy. There's a ton of things that actually happen on the back end of this. Now, again, to qualify, I'm not a lawyer. This is something where you should seek legal advice from a lawyer. This is why it's important, for example, on my own deals, I pre-screen all buyers, and usually I prefer, especially in a market like this, if somebody hasn't sold their house, I'm very wary of how are they going to, going to actually pay. And the other thing you have to consider is, if they don't close, do they have the assets so that you as the seller could go after them and actually collect something down the road? If you're talking about first time home buyers, maybe the only asset they had was the down payment money or the deposit money, you might be in trouble. So a lot of considerations to be had, but again, something to be very cognizant of as you're going through this market right now as a buyer and as a seller, because there's a lot of risk on both ends. Thank you for watching. And if you have any questions about real estate in general, always feel free to shoot me an email or a text, and I'd be more than happy to answer. Thank you.